After the death of late leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-il, the question on everyone's mind is how the North Korean regime would be affected by his death and who would become the next leader of North Korea. Official statement from the North Korean government referred to his third son, Kim Jong-un, as a successor and leader of North Korea. In all appearances, Kim Jong-un is being called on to fill the shoes of his father. But many experts on North Korean affairs are casting doubt on the future of Kim Jong-un's regime. To discuss about the post-Kim Jong-il era in North Korea, we have with us Dr. Chun Sung-hoon from the Korea Institute for National Unification. Dr. John, welcome to our program. My pleasure. Actually, the, uh, the health problem has been with us since 2008, after the Kim Jong-il got a couple of strokes. Mm -hmm. But it came, the, his death, sudden death came to us as a big surprise. Did you expect it kind of, this kind of thing would happen in such a short period of time? Yeah, I think, the, as you said, the, his death came very suddenly, but there is something that we, ex we have expected for a long time. Mm -hmm. you know? He has had a, a chronic health problems, mm -hmm. and from 2008, after he got struck, mm -hmm. you know, we all believe that his days are numbered. Mm -hmm. Within you know, a few years, he will pass away. And that's what we are facing today is that what we have expected for uh, quite, uh, several years. According to, actually, the, let me quote the Washington Post. The Washington Post called him as a kind of the Kim Jong-un trainee in leadership in the making process. But compared to 1994, when the Kim Il-sung died and then Kim Jong-il took the leadership of North Korea. Kim Jong-il actually had been in training process for almost 20 years. Yeah. So, but unlike this previous case, this was a kind of compressed succession right. within three years. Mm -hmm. So there are some, some speculations about the, the differences between this, the previous case and this case. What is your thought on this? Yeah, that's right. In terms of preparedness, you know, this is the most weak point of mm -hmm. Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. In case of Kim Jong-il, he was uh, designated as a uh, successor in, in privately in, mm -hmm. in 1974, mm -hmm. and he was uh, debuted as an official successor mm -hmm. in, from 1980. Mm -hmm. So he has had about more than 20 years as a, you know, as a, you know, preparing for the succession. Mm -hmm. But in case of Kim Jong-un, as you see, just in just a few, two years mm -hmm. is quite a short time. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, most of all, he is relatively young mm -hmm. compared to Kim Jong Il. Mm -hmm. He's in, in his late twenties, mm -hmm. so he has very short period period time for preparedness. Mm -hmm. And also, his his career is quite you know, his career is little, mm -hmm. and he's also very young age. Mm -hmm. All this has a, a, you know a com a complicates uh, you know we expect that you know this is going to be a factor that complicates his uh, smooth power transition. So actually, because of that fact. There are many speculations about the future of North Korea, especially the power structure, right. whether the one-man rule will be succeeded or there could be a collective leadership or the Kim Jong-un would be backed up by uh, the Chang song tae and his other family members. What kinds of scenario is going to be more probable than the others, and what is your take on this? So when, if you want to you know, understand the future of North Korea, I think we have to understand the unique character of the North Korean system. Mm -hmm. And North Korea is not a, a normal country, as we, uh, you know, according to the international standard of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. and North Korea is like a feudal dynasty. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it doesn't matter uh, who is to be the leader, mm -hmm. whether you're young or, young or old or uh, with Korea or without Korea. Mm -hmm. The issue is, you know, a, a, the person who is designated by this, you know, this, the guy like King, mm -hmm. he's uh, naturally become a successor. Mm -hmm. uh, in that sense, uh, Kim Jong-un has no problem in terms of legitimacy. Mm -hmm. I see. But as you said, you know, the, he's quite uh, relatively young, has no experience for running the country, mm -hmm. so he should be uh, supported and backed up by you know, this uh, power group in the inner circle groups. Uh, in so, so you mentioned the inner circle groups. So, mm -hmm. uh, actually, can you name those people who are in inner circle of that? Uh, you know, the, when uh, Kim Jong Un appeared as a, a successor two years ago at the party, mm -hmm. you know, party the representative meeting, mm -hmm. uh, they actually no, uh, Kim Jong Kim Jong Il actually reinvigorated uh, uh, almost that uh, one of the party structure, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, the party uh, military committee, mm -hmm. and this committee has revived and you know, filled with most important uh, people, mm -hmm. 
a new generation of North Korean leadership. Such as and, uh, Lee Yong-ho. Lee Yong-ho, Chang Song-tek, you know, Kim Kyung-hee, the, mm. the Kim Jong-un's uh, the, the aunt, mm. and all other young generation, mm. uh, both party and military. And this party commission, military commission, would be a core group, inner circle, and we like an emergency you know, cabinet, and it will be a key factor for running the North Korea uh, for a t- uh, time being. So, so it is quite a surprise to see the revival of the party, the mm-hmm. Korean Workers' Party, uh, compared to the actually, the, everybody thought everybody thought was that it's going to be the military, not the right. party. But now you are saying that the, mm-hmm. the party will be the central organ, mm-hmm. which will manage the transition and also the backup, the Kim Jong Un. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yes, I think. I think it, the, what Kim Jong Il did for the preparing for this transition to his son, mm-hmm. he want to he try to revive the you know party structure. Mm-hmm. And while he was uh, you know he was in power mm-hmm. in the 1980s and 2000. Actually, he uh, concerned his power on the, the Defense uh, Military Commission, mm-hmm. right? But when he tried to pre- uh, prefer the transition, he want to shift the mm-hmm. power focus from this uh, military commission to party structure. Mm-hmm. So he re, uh, re- uh, invigorated this uh, party military commission and filled with all these young and very loyal guys, mm-hmm. uh, loyal to Kim Jong Un, mm-hmm. and then you know he uh, tried to set up a new structure, a new mechanism to run this new uh, country. If, uh, uh, by Kim Jong as a new leader. So is it okay to say, as for example, mm-hmm. uh, from the big, uh, from this third, uh, the party representative meeting, mm-hmm. actually Kim Jong Il introduced new check and balance system um, mm-hmm. on in the North Korean politics to actually offset or to make a balance between the party and the military. Yeah, you can say you can say that you know previously of this. Uh, party uh, Congress meeting, mm-hmm. the power you know concentrated on this military structure. Mm-hmm. But Kim Jong Il tried to get a balance between mm-hmm. party and military, and mm-hmm. I think I see. But on the other issue, like for example, Time magazine selected a protester mm-hmm. uh, as the man of the year because right. actually he observed the what you call Arab Spring. So actually, over the mm-hmm. period of time, we were much concerned with there could be a possibility to see that kinds of phenomena to take place in North Korea. Do you think the death of Kim Jong-il could lead the situation to that direction? Yes, I think the, the, why we think the Kim Jong-un's uh, regime would be more weak mm-hmm. than the Kim, Kim Jong-il's is that you know, there, is, there is a growing changes mm-hmm. within uh, North Korean people. Mm-hmm. Uh, compared to 1994 when Kim Il-sung passed away, mm-hmm. uh, today North Korean people, mm-hmm. they you know, there is a uh, you know, constant flow of information to North Korean people compared to what, you know, uh, the, what had been made in 1994. Mm-hmm. At that time, North Korea is entirely isolated. North Korean mm-hmm. people is entirely isolated from the outside world. Mm-hmm. They didn't know what's going on in, uh, in, in the international uh, this, uh, society. But now they know much, much better than what they've known, known in 1994. Mm-hmm. And also they, they understand South Korea is much better. And now, uh, you know, today... In, Every corner of North Korean society, uh, South Korea's you know this cultural wave will spread into mm-hmm. all these corners of North Korean society. So they they understand uh, they are much inferior than South Korea. They are, they understand they are sometimes deceived by this leadership, and and they I think they, there is some this uh, the dissatisfaction mm-hmm. to the regime and to the system, and as you said. Uh, you know, as time goes, this uh, you know this kind of feeling will you know will grow, and in, in some 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 at some point of time might explode. Mm. That is the most uh, potential I see. Uh, factor that you know we have to focus on mm. uh, when we uh, see this uh, the uh, transition process in North Korea. Right? Okay, why don't we change the topic mm-hmm. right now? Actually, we have discussed all the domestic issues in North Korea, so we have so many pending issues in diplomatic front. In dealing with North Korea, such as six party talks mm-hmm. and US DPRK talks. Actually, US DPRK talks was scheduled to take place 22nd of December. That, that's been suspended. Mm-hmm. So, uh, there are so tons of tons of issues mm-hmm. for North Korea to deal with uh, in, in the coming days, especially in the its relation with DPRK, actually, there's China and the United States. Uh, what is speculation on, on this North Korea's external policy under the Kim Jong-un's leadership? 
uh, from our part, I think the most important concern is you know, this, the safe handling of North Korean nuclear capability mm -hmm. and nuclear weapons and equipment and things. Mm -hmm. you know, the, you know, the most important concern from the international community is that you know, we have to contain this nuclear capability and not to proliferate into other countries or uh, terrorist groups. So we have to focus on uh, how to maintain this you know, North Korean nuclear capability. That's number one issue. Mm -hmm. and in that sense, uh, I think the Six party talks. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, that's going to be a useful forum to you know, discuss with North Korea and to maybe sometimes help them to contain this. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, uh, everybody is now anxious for uh, re uh, resuming the six party talks, and we're we want to see some uh, developments and some successful results of the party talk, uh, six party talks. But the the caveat of the, the, the to this talks is that you know. I think the North Korea and the Kim Jong Un will not give up nuclear weapons. Uh, mm -hmm. Many people are, you know, hope and expect, uh, you know, Kim Jong -un, Kim Jong Un will have a different approach from his father, and may he may, you know, proclaim to uh, uh, denuclearize North Korea. But that's just, uh, you know, uh, wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, nuclear weapon is is a legacy of his father and his grandfather, and uh, you know, Kim Jong Un's power is based on the legacy of his, uh, his generations. So, you know, this is a symbol of power and symbol of general succession, and I think uh, Kim Jong-un will not give up and cannot give up nuclear weapon option. So, actually, the, actually that covers the question I was going to raise. Uh, mm -hmm. the, actually, the Minister Yui actually released a statement right. on this issue, and also I was, I was happy to see that kind of move mm -hmm. on the part of South Korea to, to engage North Korea in a positive way. Mm -hmm. But actually, there are, are so many issues to be resolved between the between South and North Korea. Of course, one of the denuclearization talks between South and North, and also the of there has been a rumor about the summit, inter-Korean summit, mm -hmm. and also separate family issues or tension reduction. Mm -hmm. Most of all, like a Chonanham and a Yeonpyeongdo case. How we are going to solve these issues, and what would be your recommendation? Yeah, as you said, we have uh, you know these tons of issues, and I think we have to. Uh, set a, a very a clear priority, mm -hmm. and I think the number one priority is, is also we have to help North Korea to stabilize, mm -hmm. and we should not do any action that might uh, you know uh, provoke North Korea or the, something that North Korea misunderstood as mm -hmm. a provocation. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I think the Korean government was very wise, mm -hmm. and that of course we you know uh, upgrade our defense you know a lot level, but mm -hmm. we just maintained. Uh, you know the watch con and de uh, defense con as same as, as user. As user uh, that's right. very wise policy, mm -hmm. and I think we have to continue that. And I think in terms of uh, government position toward North Korea, it, it, it may be appropriate for uh, ROK government to express, uh, send a strong uh, message, an official message to the North Korean leadership mm -hmm. that we want, we hope to, you know, North Korean system will be stabilized in you know, coming uh, coming days, and mm -hmm. we have no intention to provoke North Korea, and then propose to I well, don't have a talk. Uh, mm -hmm. for, you know. And I think the, the death of Kim Jong Il uh, provide a natural condition that uh, ROK government to you know you know this uh, live from the pre preconditions of Chonan or Yeonpyeong Island. I think it's uh, it, you know uh, it's uh, right time. Just. Dr. Chan, thank you for being with us today. It's my pleasure. This has been Dr. Chan Sung Un from Korea Institute for National Unification to share his thought on the post-Kim Jong-il era in North Korea.